And what is looking like it's becoming a staple of my channel is that I'm going to be responding to another Economics Explained video. I really enjoy his videos overall, but there are some parts uh, that I take issues with. And of course it's not possible in every single video to go into a huge amount of detail required. There are some parts where I feel that he's a bit too glib and it creates a really wrong impression and I think ultimately it just creates bad economics. And so it's my duty to turn those bad economics around and bring it into the realm of good economics. In this video, I'm going to respond to the conclusion he has on his video about the economics of the stimulus packages. And so we'll get right into it. I have joked about it before, but modern economic theories despise those who save their money and see it purely as dead capital that could have otherwise been out there circulating around and boosting economic growth. And while this is true, it is a very two-dimensional look at the economy. In reality, record low interest rates that favour borrowers more than savers and a society built around instant gratification is the reason why something like an otherwise unrelated health crisis will lead to a deep and dark economic crisis. And so there's actually quite a lot to unpack there. First and foremost, he says that modern theories despise saving. I have absolutely no idea what theories he's talking about. There is something called modern monetary theory and one of the main tenets of modern monetary theory is that we are permanently underperforming in the economy. So you can imagine we have potential output, you know, if we fully utilize everything in the economy up here and they believe that we're constantly underneath. And so they believe rates should be low forever or at the very least for the foreseeable future. And then there's a whole bunch of other things that they believe in there. They also believe that the central bank doesn't have as much power and all this other kind of jazz. But the thing is, there's no actual theory that says that saving is bad. You might actually look at the case of the US where savings rates are actually at historic lows. They have ticked up recently due to the crisis. People are saving a bit more money, They're not spending as much. But in general, US savings rates are quite low. And then you're wondering, well, if US savings rates are so low, but it's the richest country on earth and it's still investing, still growing and all that kind of jazz, why is it that we need savings? Well, the US is an exception. It's the only exception on the planet. And the reason for that is that the US has the world's reserve currency. The rest of the world invests into the US. And so the rest of the world does the savings. And this is the problem that happened in the global financial crisis, is that there's a savings glut and those savings had to go somewhere. And so they eventually got funneled into the mortgage-backed securities. Obviously, there are other securities made by the private sector, but the mortgage-backed securities were the big ones. So why this was a global issue was that house prices in the US dropped, and then the value of those mortgage-backed securities also dropped, and then there was a run. And there was a run specifically on the shadow banking sector. The shadow banking sector is the one that held all the mortgage-backed securities. That is where the mortgage-backed securities traded as if they were treasuries. They traded as if they were the safest investment vehicle on earth essentially, equivalent to US Treasuries. And that is the situation for the US. The savings rate can be low in the US because the rest of the world invests into the US. But for every other country on the planet, people must save more to increase investment. You have an identity called savings equals investment. And this is aggregate savings equals aggregate investment. What this means is that any money that is saved is inevitably being invested somewhere in the economy point is, any money you save up, assuming it's not under your mattress, assuming it's being held somewhere, that other institution that you're saving your money with is not holding your money out of the goodness of its own heart. It's doing it because it can get a return. It can use that money for something else. And that is the investment. That's the point. If you have your savings in the bank, you are an investor in the economy, an inadvertent investor, because your bank is using that money. It's using those savings to invest somewhere into the economy. And that is the sense in which aggregate savings equals aggregate investment. And we increase our savings rate and we can increase the investment rate. And so with this in mind, there is no economic theory that says that savings are bad. Now you might ask yourself, what about people holding their money literally as cash underneath their bed? Well, the thing is there just aren't that many people doing that. Because you get a positive return with the banking sector and there's simply more economic freedom by having your money in the financial system, the vast majority of people have their money in the financial system, in some sort of institution. So I'm gonna be emphatic about this. Record low rates are not the reason that a quote unquote unrelated health crisis has caused major economic damage around the world. It's simply not the case. Yes, we do have record low rates around the world, but that's because growth in general is slowing. 
And there are, of course, many other factors that contribute to the record low rates around the world, but that is not the reason that we're experiencing slowdowns all around the world. The thing is, savings rates deeper around the world, and by basic arithmetic, they have to. For the US to be a debtor nation, there has to be a net saver nation. And one of those nations, of course, is China, which invests heavily into the US. But the thing is, it's every nation around the world which is suffering under the effects of COVID. And that's something we've done to ourselves. We've done it deliberately. We've deliberately decided to slow down economic activity to stop the spread of the virus. And this is regardless of what economic system is in place. It's also regardless of how consumers act in that economy. And it's also regardless of the savings rates. The savings rate of a nation and how that nation fared under COVID, they are not correlated. It is partly down to geography and it's partly why Australia has fared so well. We do not share borders with another country. And so it's much harder for the virus to travel into Australia. And it was much easier for us to shut down our borders. Whereas for other countries around the world, especially in Europe, it was not easy to shut down the borders. And you can see this in the US as well. It's not easy for states, individual states, to shut down their borders. And so the thing is, we deliberately decided to shut down the economy. We've decided to do that to save people's lives. All the models said that if the world did not react, we might get hundreds of millions of dead around the world. We obviously don't want that, so we deliberately shut down the economy. This is regardless of what the savings rate is. It's regardless of consumer preferences, consumer tastes. It's regardless of what you think about capitalism or instant gratification or so on. It's simply to shut down the economy and slow the spread of the virus. This is not a test of capitalism. Dictatorships around the world, they are doing the exact same thing. Communist nations, socialist nations, they're all doing it. This is a shared problem and it's something that we have to deal with together. The only nations that were spared were ones where it was much easier to control the spread and that had nothing to do with the savings rate. And so to conclude, aggregate savings equals aggregate investment. The more that we save on aggregate, the more money that can be used as an investment. And if your savings are in the financial system, you are an investor in the economy. Somewhere, somehow, your money is being used as an investment for someone. Someone is using your money. Unless your money literally is underneath your bed, but that's very, very, very few people. 99.999% of us invest our money, even in inadvertently, into the economy. And that is why aggregate savings equals aggregate investment. And that is why no credible economic theory says that savings are bad. And this response to COVID all around the world is deliberate. It's to slow the spread of the virus. We have to slow down economic activity. And that is a price we are willing to pay to save lives. Otherwise, many hundreds of millions of people would have died around the world if we didn't. And that's all I have to say about that. Thank you for watching. Subscribe, rate and share all the good stuff. Definitely helps my channel and I'll see you guys next time.